and welcome to you Regina 120. I'm Jeff Clef and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. And today we're going to follow along the theme of the last video and we're going to be talking about the existential quantifier. Uh, so if you remember from the last video, the last video was the universal quantifier. So that should kind of give you a hint that the last one had something to do with, you know, saying things about uh, everything in a set, or, or referring to everything uh, in a collection, or all the instances of, or all the things that exist. So today, this one is going to be about some things. So the, the symbol involved uh, is going to be a, similar to the upside down A, a backwards E. regular e. This is our backwards e, right? Usually followed by a variable of some kind uh, to specify what is being, or what is existing, or what we're talking about, or what is being referred to. But what this is going to mean, if you see this in practice, in an equation, or an expression of some kind, that it is going to be uh, referring to some kind of x. So usually there's going to be a condition or a constraint uh, that makes it specific exactly what you're, you're referring to as existing or, or being, being present. So you could ask something like this, that there exists some x such that x is equal to 4, which is true for, you know, that there's a number x that it is equal to 4, which is 4. That, that's kind of trivial. Uh, but you can get more complicated ones, too. Remember from the last video, one of the examples of you could, you could talk about is all even numbers, that this is going to be true if there exists some x such that x is even. So there exists at least one even number, uh, which is true. There are many even numbers. 2 is an even number, 4 is an even number. But this is going to be true or false depending on this condition, uh, and this condition in this case is, you know, that there's an even number that exists, and of course there is, so it, this is going to be true. So, similar to the universal quantifier, these are both going to be, uh, allow you to do kind of multiple things. One, you're going to be able to define uh, and talk about kinds of things, or, 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 or collections, or sets, uh, once we get into set theory, uh, of things. Uh, and in order to do so, these are going to allow you to say true or false things. So for example, from, well, we'll try to write a false thing on for both of them. For both of them, you can say there exists some x that x is greater than 50 and x is less than minus 1. Well, that's impossible because you can't be both greater than 50 and uh, less than minus 1. Uh, similarly, uh, you could say for all y, where y is greater than 50 and y is minus 1. Again, this refers to nothing. There is no such y. Uh, it's impossible to, to define that. Now, if you could replace the and in this case with or, then this is possible, because it's possible to have a number line. Between, say, negative 1 and 50, uh, if it's greater than 50, and less than minus 1, it's going to be kind of the extreme to everything but from minus 1 to 50. And so if we're talking about all of this, it's going to be this entire uh, part of the real number line. If we're talking about there exists or just the, the, the sum 
example from. It could be anything in this this region. Any any part of the number of the line. As long as there is one, this will be true. So it's 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 basically allowing you to to prove by existence or prove by example something in this uh, this region exists. It's also possible, or possible, possible to uh, to use the or, and, and to specify that things do not exist. And so there's two ways that the the term "not" can really be applied here. Of course, this little hook thing is the symbol for "not," but you could have that there exists no x. This would be one way to use this "not." And there does not exist an X. Most of the time, these are going to be equivalent. Uh, I, I can imagine it, there may be some examples where they're not, but you, you can kind of view this as two separate cases. Whereas, you know, it is never the case that there is some X. Whereas in this case, it may be that there, while it's not all x have some properties, there may be some example or some existence of some x that does. So uh, just be careful when you're moving the knot around here, because there may be cases where uh, you have to kind of pay attention, especially when you're dealing with both. Uh, but just so that you're aware, there's there may be differences between having the, the knot on the inside versus the outside, you may be talking about different things. And so really we've got two kinds of things we can do to variables now. Uh, we've got, you know, you, you can make equations with the, the kind of basic math that you know uh, already. And so the, the, the variables in this equation are going to have meaning in the context of this equation, you know, they're going to be defined. You know, if you know two of them, you'll know the third one. If you know one of them, you can know the second one in terms of the first one, etc. Uh, but you can now also say that there exists a, a, an x such that x is the radius of a circle of diameter d, you know, that x and then you could kind of use that, you know, that, that x that you defined here uh, in, in, a, in an equation later. But the important thing is to note that you, you basically learn to do something new with your your variables, and that you could conceivably solve problems if you knew how to make use of that fact. Uh, the other thing to note is it's possible to stack them uh, so that you could have multiple variables being defined in this way and that again you can kind of specify how that or what what you're 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 referring to uh, as you kind of go now the important thing to note is when you do that the 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 variables are kind of resolved uh, from the inside out so just like you probably encountered bed mass before you know there are rules for for manipulating these things and the when you're defining what y is that happens before before you define what x is. So, makes sense. Um, the other thing to note is that you're allowed to move, if you have two of the same kind of quantifier, uh, you're allowed to move them around. So this is equal to that. That is allowable. What is not allowable
is if you have different quantifiers in the same stack, moving them around, that will that's not a valid thing to do. You're going to change the meaning of how the variables are defined by doing that. So just keep that in mind. Um, so uh, there the uh, so you're 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 basically given this tool. You, you now know how to specify both all and some or the existence of all and some of certain kinds of things. Let's look at another example of uh, something we've learned in this series, which you can go back and watch previous videos to kind of get a, a feel for. Uh, the logical connectives like and, or, not, or, or, and uh, to basically test the truth of more complicated things. So if you have something simple like say x is even and all x such that x is even, uh, the, the you can connect that with a logical relation such as and to all that there exists some y that y is 2. So in this case, Both of those turn out to be true. Of course, for uh, NAND, if both of the uh, uh, things that are fed into it are true, NAND returns false. So this ends up being false. So you can build uh, expressions and, and, and uh, things that are true and false from that. And so this is now a tool that you can kind of build on and do more complicated things with. Uh, apparently, the, this notation and this this concept, uh, al although uh, in informal or in an informal sense, has been around for a while. Uh, it does date to Bertrand Russell, and if I'm pronouncing correct, Giuseppe Piano, uh, the same guy who made piano arithmetic. Uh, and so this is something that goes back to about the early 20th, 20th maybe late 19th century. And uh, it is most useful for set, th set theory and math, but you can actually start to use this in other areas and in other fields, and in specifically in computer programming. There's going to be analogs to both of these things that are never going to be far away at any time. Uh, so it's good to know that you know you can talk about something that exists and in a, a way that will either be true or false, um, and that this is something that you can do. So hopefully, uh, you'll, when you see one of these two symbols uh, in a paper or a discussion or, or wherever you are browsing around the internet. Again, don't let it frighten you. You now know what exactly, or, or at least in general, it, it, it's going to mean. Um, with just as a last cute example, uh, this little brain was thrown at me today by uh, Chris across the room saying that he was going to throw me a piece of his mind. Uh, this is, of course, uh, an example of the, the, the kind of uh, sense in which we're talking about uh, things that exist. So there exists a piece of his mind. That was thrown at me. And this can include everything from a, a completely insignificant piece to the whole of his mind. So everything about or everything from one extreme to the other there it is a, a piece of his mind. So it, it's true that there exists a piece of his mind. Uh, of course, that was thrown. Um, but it, again, you, you can, it is true that something exists uh, from the point where there's, there's that something that exists to many such things exist. So uh, it, it's kind of a broad uh, thing to be able to talk about and to be able to refer to. And hopefully that's a valuable thing for you. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or would like other examples, uh, feel free to ask uh, questions or uh, request those examples in any comment thread where this video is posted. Uh, come back uh, next video and we'll be talking more about logical fallacies, which uh, we'll hopefully be able to continue to uh, build on. Talk to you then.